Hi, and welcome to the show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Rate and review the show at kevinmd.com slash rate. Subscribe at kevinmd.com slash podcast. Today in the show, we have Henry Buckwald. He is a surgeon and his book is titled Healthcare Upside Down, A Critical Examination of Policy and Practice. There's an excerpt on Kevin MD titled American Healthcare, The Best of Times, The Worst of Times. Henry, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. We'll get into your book and article in a little bit. First off, briefly share your story and journey to where you are today. I grew up in New York City and went to Columbia College, Columbia Medical School, Columbia Presbyterian Hospital Internship, and then the Air Force. And I was privileged to serve in the Strategic Air Command. And then I came to Minnesota. And the rest of my education in surgery, and I stayed here and became a professor of surgery. And basically, I've divided my time between academics, research, and active clinical practice. I think I've done about 10,000 operations in my lifetime. And from that perspective, the perspective of a clinician, I've come to the realization, and that's why I wrote this book, that terrible things have happened to our healthcare. It's been turned upside down. It no longer serves the patients. It serves the administration that's in charge of it and who are profiting from it. So before we talk about the book, let me just ask for your perspective on general surgery. You've done 10,000 plus operations. You've seen a lot over your decades long career. Just comment on the evolution of surgery. What do you think are some of the biggest changes over the years when it comes to surgery? A surgery was put on the map in the late 19th century when anesthesia was available. And surgery went from incisional, draining an axis, to excisional, extirpative surgery. And that was the heyday in the 1950s, 60s. We did these huge cancer operations. Then came reparative surgery, aortic valve replacements, heart surgery. And today, <laughs> I'm glad you asked, I'm actually the advocate for the American College of Surgeons for metabolic surgery. And I think that's the new area, which means operating on a normal organ to achieve a metabolic goal. Now, the best example in modern times is bariatric or obesity surgery. And there I've done over 4,000 of these. We operate on normal intestine, normal stomach, and we achieve a metabolic goal. We change the body metabolism for the better. And this is going to be a new and promising field. As a matter of fact, I'm working with the NFL PA because the former football players have a lot of concussions, traumatic brain injury, and it would seem that we can come up with some sort of a simple surgical solution that might help them where there is today no other therapy. So surgery as everything else is in evolution and the newest wrinkle in it, I think, is metabolic surgery. All right. So let's talk about your book. It's titled Healthcare Upside Down, A Critical Examination of Policy and Practice. Now, before talking about the book itself, tell me the events leading up to you writing that book. The event is 60 years of doing surgery and seeing a time when surgery and, and medicine was a great contributor and we were number one in the world. I've written several books, but my books for lay audiences, this is a book for a lay audience. It's, I've written an atlas and so on. Those are medical books. But I, the last book I wrote was Surgical Renaissance in the Heartland. And it was about the time in Minnesota where heart surgery started here. Obesity surgery started here. Transplant was high. And the surgeon was an independent entity free to do research, free to think, free to contribute. And that has changed. And when I talk about the book, let's do it now. It's changed following the language. We used to be a clinic, a hospital, and now we are called a firm. So we've taken on business language and we are now called providers, no longer doctors. And 
most people now in medicine, most doctors, I'm still a doctor, I'm not gonna become a provider. Most doctors are employees. So their independence has been taken. And the worst of it is the patient has become, quote, a client and is treated like a client. And at this stage in my life, I thought, what can I do about all this? Maybe I can write a book full of facts and statistics, but nicely framed so that people read it and can do something about it. Because the ultimate message in the book is, it's up to us, it's up to citizens. Nobody's gonna do it for us. So let's follow up on that thread where you said, physicians are now providers, patients are now clients. The language of business is taking over medicine. What are the repercussions of that? Oh, the repercussions are you get connected with a robot. And then maybe you get a human being. And that human being is not the doctor that you ask for. It's an interrogator. They want to know why you're calling and how you're calling. And then they tell you can't see your doctor. Or he is not or she available. And we'll give you another doctor. So the doctor-patient relationship has been destroyed. And I think that's the essence of it, because a patient used to say, my doctor. Now, what does that mean? It means an emblem of trust. And the doctor would say, my patient. Now, it's not possessiveness. It's the accepting of responsibility. And in today's system, the doctor goes home at four or five. Uh, hospitalist takes over or the night staff takes over, emergency staff takes over, the doctor-patient relationship no longer exists. And therefore, the feeling of responsibility for your patient doesn't exist. And the patient doesn't have somebody that they feel, this person is looking after me. I trust them. So uh, that's the epitome of it is it's a destruction of that cardinal principle that has lasted for decades, for generations, for centuries. So your book is titled Healthcare Upside Down. What are some other major ways that the American healthcare system is proverbially upside down? The book has 14 chapters. And the first chapter is statistics, but I try to make the statistics very palatable. There are eight parameters that world health is measured by. The first one everybody knows about is longevity. How long do you live? And then there's infant mortality and what diseases do you cure? We are well below every Western country in Europe, Australia, New Zealand, our neighbor Canada. Our life expectancy is at the level of countries that we would consider third world countries. And yet there's propaganda, so to speak, that we're number one. We're not number one. We're way down on the list. We're only number one in one thing, cost. 17% of our gross national product goes to healthcare. The nearest person, the nearest country is Switzerland at 9%. And so we cost more than anybody else in the world, almost twice as much. And we provide somewhere one third down the list. And that can be dramatically seen in longevity and life expectancy. That's where you start. You start with the statistics and say, why is this happening to us? So answer that question. What are some of the major reasons that well, explain those statistics? Because healthcare has been turned upside down. Because today it is in the hands of administrators, for instance, people who the CEOs of hospitals, the CEOs of pharmaceutical companies, of instrument companies, the, and certainly the insurance carriers, they're taking home 20, $25 million annually. And that's the CEO. And then there are sub-CEOs and vice presidents and presidents and, and little presidents and, and so on. And where is that money coming from? It's being sucked out of actual health care. It's being sucked out of really paying doctors and nurses. And 
they not only are they profiting, not only are they profiteers, but they're administrating. So in other words, if you are now an employee physician, they can tell you, no, we don't want you to use this drug or do this treatment or do this operation because it's not profitable. And we want you to bring in a lot of patients into the hospital in the beginning, because then we can do x-rays and lab, make a lot of money, but then we want them out. We don't want them there just because they're in pain and we'll need some nursing care. That doesn't make any money. We want them out and we want the next profitable patient in. And if you have a bunch of employee doctors and one of them has a full slate of patients, so you call and you say, I'd like to see this doctor again. They say, I'm sorry, he's not available. She's not available. And you put somebody else in the slot who hasn't got their dance card full. And if it's run from that administrative perspective, like a pyramid, the administrators are on top and the patient is now on the bottom. And with that goes the following realization, the patient pays for everything. You know, we say socialized medicine is a terrible thing. 65% of our healthcare is socialized. If you count the armed forces, Medicare, medical assistant, Indian service, all these are Obamacare. These are all socialized medicine programs. And the rest is private industry. And you wouldn't buy a car without seeing it and come there and have somebody give you a different car. But we do that with medicine. We pay either through taxes or insurance premiums, and we have nothing to say about the care. And so actually in the chapter I have on vocabulary, I coined a word called administocracy. Hmm. And we're living under an administocracy where we, the citizens, the ultimate payers of health care, have nothing to say about the health care we get. And that's wrong. That's healthcare upside down. Now, for the remaining time of the interview, I want to focus on some of your main solutions on how we can address this problem. I have about 10 suggestions. And I'm like the little boy who said the emperor has no clothes. They didn't make him a tailor and have to close the emperor. So they're suggestions. But of course, we have to work through our groups because in essence, what happens in this country is done by lobbying. We have to work through our political organizations. We have to work through our representatives. We have to work through the media. And I'm so grateful to you for having me on this show. We have to educate people and say people should say it's enough, let's do something. Now, one way of doing things, at least in the private sector, would be having insurance companies that are fraternal organizations. As I said, I'm a veteran. I belong to USAA, and it's a fraternal organization. It isn't a business. It's sure. It is a business, but it is run by the people who are insured by it. And so uh, that's one way of getting at the private insurance. There are many things that can be done. For instance, a national movement by a philanthropist could make this, there's big data out there. You can mine big data in huge tanks of computerized data to show what we are actually paying for. So first comes knowledge, then comes the willingness to do something about it. And individuals are not gonna be able to do anything themselves, but through their organizations. American Medical Association, the postal workers, etc. We're talking to Henry Buckwald. He's a surgeon, and his book is titled Healthcare Upside Down, a Critical Examination of Policy and Practice. Henry, what are some take-home messages that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience? And I believe that you also want to end with an excerpt from your book. I think I can do them together. Hold on. This is from the epilogue, end of the book. I'm going to read you the last two paragraphs. The opening moment of life, birth, involves health care for mother and child. Growing up and achieving adulthood involves health care. Being able to live a mature life, to work, to love, to have children, 
is dependent on health care. And the final chapter, aging, can be realized and even made pleasurable by health care. Health care is, therefore, integral to life from beginning to end. Health care is not a commodity, but a necessity. Health care needs to be treated with respect. The establishment, practice, and financing of healthcare affects everyone, should not be neglected by anyone, and must be the concern of all of us. I've been a doctor for 60 years, and during those years, at times, I've also been a patient. I've held the hands of my patients. I've been the one whose hand has been held. I've received trust and given trust. The therapeutic decisions my patients and I reach we're not subject to the interdiction of a third party. I do not want to have my life's role as a physician and surgeon, my joy in the process, usurped by an administocracy. As a patient, I do not want to hold hands with a robot and confide my health problems to a faceless entity. As a doctor, a patient, a person, I reject the currently shattered doctor-patient relationship Healthcare is upside down. Let us set it right side up. Thank you so much for joining me on the show, sharing your time and insight. Thank you so much again for having me.